Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about and comparing falcon feet. Which might seem kind of like an odd topic, but this is stemming from the fact that right now I have a uh, captive bred lander falcon. That's a first year bird. Male, tarsal. And a uh, similarly sized from the wild, a uh, couple year old peregrine falcon from Utah. And because they're about the same size, principles that I talk about and teach are really easy to see when you're looking at both sides. So I thought I'd talk about feet. And when we're talking about raptors of any kind, one of the hallmarks of raptors is they hunt with their feet. They grip. Now that could be utilized different way from a secretary bird kicking a snake, stomping on it and holding it down uh, to a falcon usually is hitting with its rear talon and breaking the neck of its prey that falls out of the sky. But the point is, a lot of birds, a lot of bird species, have just kind of chicken feet. They have a little bit of a grip enough to perch, but uh, but raptors, falcons, hawks, owls, eagles, crush. They grip. They they and they can utilize their feet as useful hunting tools and eating feeding tools. And that is one of the things that makes them so different. You see a pelican dive down and catch a fish with its beak. Meanwhile, you see a bald eagle do the same thing with its feet. So feet are something that are very important. And uh, I know sometimes around the world we define things differently, but people often ask, well, what's a talon? And it, for me, it's a claw that's used with impaling force. All birds have claws on their feet, but falcons, hawks, owls, and eagles use those claws for catching their prey, which is unique. Falcons. Well, when we're talking about falcons, the base build of a falcon is perfect for catching birds, but they don't all do that. And anytime I say anything on these videos, always remember that anytime you, a biologist or an ecologist or any sort of a scientist tries to understand something in the natural world, we, um, <clears throat> we have to look at things and try to understand biology. Biology is fluid, it's changing, it's, it'll always break rules. Whatever you think you know, nature will always break it. So I am aware of that. When I'm making statements, uh, these, are, these are, infor are informed statements based off of what we can observe in the natural world. But I want to acknowledge that I am aware there are always exceptions to these rules. Now, if you want to catch bird as your prey, no matter what species of raptor you are, one, one thing you have to get around is the fact that, first of all, a bird that is a prey item that's being chased by you is probably very fast. So most bird hunting species, of course, they themselves have speed. And I want to pause on this too because a lot of times if you're new to the sport and you're learning about falconry and we're like, oh, I'm going to use this bird to hunt birds. I'm going to use a falcon to hunt a duck. I'm going to use a saker falcon to hunt a bustard or, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. People will be like, Oh, isn't that cannibalism? It's like, no. You're a mammal, right? Yes, so is a cow. If you eat a hamburger, you're a mammal eating a mammal. Coyote eating a rabbit. A cougar eating a deer. Weasel eating a rat. Yeah, it's a mammal hunting a mammal. That is not cannibalism. If a cow ate a cow, that's cannibalism. If a peregrine falcon ate a peregrine falcon, that would be cannibalism. There's nothing at all remotely cannibalistic about a raptor hunting a different species of bird. That's, again, no different than a coyote catching a rabbit or a wolf catching a deer. Same thing, same exact principle. But when you're going after birds, not only do you need to be fast, but you have to deal with feathers. You've got a moving target in the air that can literally go in three dimensions any way so you're reaching out to get it in some way, and it's covered with feathers. And over time, uh, prey species have developed extra feathers on kind of their rump area and at the base of their tail. And those feathers are longer, usually more curved in layers, and they're denser. And so it's very easy for you as a predator to reach out, grab, and just get a bunch of feathers that come out. This is the same principle as a lizard, where some lizards, if a predator reaches out and grabs, their tail comes off and they run away and survive. They just don't have a tail now. It's the same thing. Rip out that butt fluff. The prey species flies away, grows in a new set of feathers. This is, uh, this is a challenge for predatory birds to be able to catch another bird. There's two main ways to do it. Uh, normally, long, skinny toes that have a broad reach 
can reach around and grab a hold, okay? And, and grab through and get enough mass so you're not just grabbing like this, but around to be able to actually hold on to it. Kind of like palming a basketball, same principle. That is the approach that uh, falcon's feet have. Occipiters uh, are also renowned bird hunters. Occipiters are species like goshawks, for example. And you look at goshawk feet, they have comparatively short toes compared to a falcon, but oversized claws. Same thing with a cooper's hawk or with any really species of bird hunting occipiter. They're, they're still doing the same thing. So instead of reaching around the feathers and grabbing the body, they're having oversized, overlengthed claws to impale through those feathers on the backside of the bird they are hunting. But we're talking about falcons. So the, we have to understand that, the, again, I'm making kind of a generalized statement that long skinny toes are well suited for snatching a bird out of the air. So let's take a look at the opposite. Let's say you're, you're a rodent hunter, okay? Something like uh, a red-tailed hawk has very comparatively short, extremely thick toes. Same thing with a ferruginous hawk. These, these are members of the Budio family or the buzzard family, big soaring hawks that mostly soar or sit on a tree or telephone pole and look for a rodent to catch. Rodents will turn around and bite. They have these chisel-like incisors and they'll stab through. They'll bite your toe off. So with some eagles and definitely with soaring hawks like Budios, it favors you to have thicker toes that can withstand a lot of punishment from a rodent that might turn around and bite you if you don't dispatch them quick enough. So there's kind of my two original statements. Long skinny toes are good for catching a bird out of the air. Short thick toes are good for catching a rodent and hopefully not getting your toe bit off in the process because you have thicker toes. Well, within the, uh, the family of falcons that we have all over the world, Again, I, I would say the base design of a falcon is that of a bird hunter. However, there you're going to have diversification. You're going to have birds that will hunt rodents and birds. Falcons that hunt rodents and birds. You're going to have some that almost exclusively hunt rodents. So let's take a look at the two end extremes before we do our comparison of a lantern and a peregrine. So on the most birdiest bird hunter end, let's take a look at a merlin. Merlins are very small circumpolar falcons, and their toe, they almost exclusively hunt birds. They will hunt insects as well, but they are built to athletically pursue and catch birds out of the air. And their toes are insanely long and insanely skinny for their size. So you have that side. So yeah, the, some of the most bird hunting of all falcons, the Merlin, Definitely has that super long, super skinny. Now again, I mentioned uh, that they, there, there's always rules being broken. Uh, I have a friend who was out trapping years ago, trapping for kestrels in the middle of a snowstorm with a ball chattery trap with a mouse inside. And he thought th through the snowstorm that he saw a kestrel put out the trap, it was a Merlin and the Merlin came down and got caught. It was like, well, look at the circumstances. It was a snowstorm, hungry, opportunity. Normally a Merlin would not go after a little mouse like that, but in that circumstance it did. On the other end, let's look at a falcon that is only slightly smaller than a Merlin, yet has a life almost exclusively hunting rodents, and that is the American kestrel. Now, American kestrels will go after whatever they need. They're built for rodents. They will hunt birds. We even hunt birds with them in falconry. They hunt a lot of insects. They will hunt lizards, they will hunt snakes, but they're really built for rodents. And it shows when we look at their feet. Compared to that Merlin, this kestrel has, for its size, very short, stumpy toes. And for its size, comparatively thick toes. Again, these are feet that can handle the punishment of a rodent bite without hopefully losing your toe in the process. So here's our two ends of the spectrum. Long, skinny toes are built more for that, more for hunting birds. Shorter, thicker toes are, are better suited for hunting rodents. Well, let's take a look at these two falcons. Uh, the peregrine falcons, uh, to be fair, are, are a worldwide, worldwide species. They live almost everywhere. They adapt very well. And within that, uh, they have a broad range of appearances. Like here's a Peel's peregrine that I flew from the Pacific Northwest. And look how comparatively colorless and how deep and, and uh, thick the barring on the chest is. And, but still massive toes. 
And then compare this to a little peregrine I have right now, which is an anatom subspecies peregrine, which is one we have locally here in Utah, and so much more colorful and a lot smaller of a bird, uh, of, a, of a subspecies. But knowing that is fine. I, I know the peregrines of all over the world, and they're going to be a little different everywhere you go. But we're looking at a Utah peregrine here. So, and we're comparing that to this lander falcon. Now, lander is also, remember, all birds of prey, within a few months of hatch, they're full-sized. They're ready to go. But they have juvenile colors. And then the next year, they're going to molt into adulthood. So this lander today that we're looking at, he is... He's my new lander that um, he has his juvenile colors, which are very similar to the colors of a juvenile peregrine falcon. Very similar, especially on the chest. But next year, he will also be very color he, colorful. He will have sort of that reddish pink chest and a blue back and the, the markings on his head will be, you know, much more defined and pronounced. But he's not gonna get any bigger. That's the important thing. So even though we're looking at an adult peregrine and a first year um, and a first year lander falcon, the important principle here is that both of these birds are as big as they're going to get. Looking at their feet, the peregrine falcons we know are love to hunt birds. It's what they're built to do. They'll do other things. There's always exceptions. I've even filmed them hunting bats down in St. George, Utah and eating them on the wing, but they're basically built for catching birds. And when we look at his toes, just as we would expect, long skinny toes, with decent sized talons. Very delicately built, not a lot of fat or muscle tissue around them. It's, it's a lot of skin and tendon for the most part. Now when we compare that over to the lanner, we see that the lanner falcon does have long toes and that's good for catching birds, but they're not quite as long as on the peregrine and they are most definitely thicker than on the peregrine. And that is because even though lanner falcons hunt a lot of birds, they live in areas that are a bit more harsh and they are not quite as athletic as a peregrine. And so because they don't have that, those areas of expertise quite as refined as a peregrine, they, they are willing to go after prey that is, uh, you know, would be beneath a peregrine. Things like lizards and snakes and gerbils and other rodents. They will go after all of these things, but they will also athletically pursue sand grouse, doves, pigeons, partridge, things of that nature. So so it, it's kind of like um, you, the, the, the desert scrappy version of a peregrine with this lantern looking at the toes. So it's really neat when you understand the biology and you understand the basics that in theory, Short, thick toes are good for catching rodents. Long, skinny toes are good for catching birds. And you're like, well, what if you're comparing falcon to falcon and you see, well, this is a falcon species that is willing to go after rodents as well as birds. Are the toes thicker? Yes, they are. Are the toes shorter? A little bit. Yes, that is the case. So I think it's fascinating to just kind of see and, and look at how biology works in that way. Now I understand there's complexities and there's multiple layers and multiple benefits to the size and shape of feet. For example, jeer falcons, which are the largest falcon in the world, they're arctic birds and they, they're almost always in cold or cold and dry climates. They hunt a lot of birds, but they also do hunt uh, arctic hares and arctic ground squirrels. So they're, they, they do have, for their size, much thicker and much shorter toes than if you scaled a peregrine up that size. So you, could, you can take the hawk approach and say, well, see, if, if an arctic ground squirrel turns around and bites their toe, they're, they're better protected by having that thicker toe. That is true, but you also have to factor in the fact that this is a species that lives in such, such cold climates that the thicker any appendage is any 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 toe any you know uh, you, you know around the sear all of this the thicker it is the better it will retain heat which can be a life or death situation because if you get frostbite on a toe and it falls off you, survival of the fittest you're no longer the fittest so there's a case to be made that jeer falcons may also have shorter thicker toes to uh, the the longer the toe is the further away it is from your beating heart, from your blood supply. So the shorter it is, 
then the better it able it is to regulate heat. And the thicker it is, the better it is able to regulate heat. So I know there's factors in that you can see that there's all kinds of areas you can discuss about it. But I still love just comparing a lander falcon and a peregrine falcon that are almost the same size, these two individuals. And, and yet you can see, oh, yep, clearly the peregrine is built more for delicate hunting of aerial prey. Delicate meaning it's, not, it's less prone to wrestle on the ground. Okay, I know they still smack like a brick dropped out of an airplane onto their prey. It still it puts a heavy toll on them. But um, where? But then you look at the toes of that lander falcon, and you can clearly see. Okay, this is a bird that is better suited for a more diverse range of prey. Not only birds, but also rodents and reptiles as well that may involve some wrestling on the ground. I think it's fascinating. Love these in-depth looks. It's always fun to look up close and really understand these species that we love so much. But I hope this was of interest to you. Hope you enjoyed seeing these birds up close. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you would like, if you have any other questions on this or what other videos you would like me to make. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help me build up this channel. And as always, happy hawking.